Hey, replay viewers. Thanks for joining. Hello, everybody. Welcome. Hi, Michael. How are you? I, uh, I've had bronchitis this week, so I still sound kind of funny. I ran into some mold in the studio last week and uh, it blasted me. So that green and orange stuff, I don't even really know. Yeah, thanks. I uh, had just finished making a bunch of these. I made some, I'm making some pitcher bodies and some other forms and I, sorry about that. I, um, yeah, I just ran across a bat that had some nasty stuff on it and I got out the Clorox and blasted the stuff, but I'd already gotten kind of hammered. So I've had bronchitis, I've been on prednisone, all that fun stuff. So <coughs> I apologize, but I wanted to check in and say hi and see how everybody was doing. I'm working on trying to get these pictures. I've got, uh, I threw three of these last Sunday. And I've had that my I've had them in my damp box. They're about um, about three to five pounds of clay. I'm not sure what the height is on these. I didn't measure them. Hello. So it looks like we're at about oh just shy of nine inches on a wet. Thank you. So I've got some handles that I've kind of started to set up to dry. So I'm going to turn this into a pitcher. So I've got a handle I need to put in here. Um, I'm playing with some ideas about what I want to do with a spout shape here, something probably slab built and attached. Um, it's it's uh, just uh, not quite leather yet, it's almost there. <coughs> Again, I apologize for the cough. I haven't been talking a whole lot this last week. Um, so I've got those in progress. I thought I'd show you guys a couple other things while I'm working on this. We, uh, I think several of us kind of watched Neil Shalani do some of these kind of pots, uh, which reminded me I had been, I had done these several years ago and I really enjoy this form. I had forgotten how much, thanks Michael, I had forgotten how much fun these were. I have this new process with applying the fabric and the slip and I think these forms are going to be really, really awesome. Yeah, they're they're a lot of fun, aren't they? And I've got a I've got a customer who wants a whole bunch of set of canisters, and I thought I'd experiment and see if this form was something that would be appealing. So this one's just about six inches tall. I don't. Um, I compress this a lot with my metal rib and my red Cheryl rib. So before I cut this down, uh, I will come back again and compress uh, so it was compressed when I threw it and I'll compress it again and then when I cut this after it's set up a little bit I'll come back in on the inside and I'll do some more compression uh, in a different direction and for me doing compression in in different directions with oh yeah maybe that's the one thing about this form that's really hard yeah because getting this closed, this form closed at the top, and having it not thin out to where it's you know super thin can be really challenging. So, um, so this I'm I'm playing with this form to see if with my new uh, with my new fabric uh, lace application with slip, I think this is going to be a lot of fun. I'm going to try and get this done today. Oh, thanks you guys. Thanks so much for inviting followers. I really appreciate that. I apply the slip, the red iron oxide, hi Tim, uh, through the fabric onto the form and it gives it an incredible texture that I'm really loving. And then I put, yes, it's Denise, right? Um, they are, uh, it, it gives it a really neat, put the white glaze over the top of it and it gives it just this incredible texture which I'll show you guys in a minute. So that's one of the things I'm working on. I was really happy Neil reminded me about this form because I had forgotten, you know, we play with forms and we move through various things. Good, thank you. Um, and and as we trans transition from one piece and one exploration to the next, sometimes we leave behind things that are interesting that were maybe 
worth revisiting. And for me, this is this is that form. I love what Neil does with it. I hope what I do has something to say that's a little bit different. Um, I'm loving sort of the organic uh, uh, texture with a more elegant form. It's that dichotomy of uh, sort of that, you know, the decomposing and the, the natural with something that can be really elegant and it's sort of this clash of flavors maybe that really draws me to the work that I started out doing, kind of got away from, and now I'm coming back to. So that's one. And then let me show you this too. <coughs> This is just a more simple stated form. I have, uh, this, is, this is just a basic base form. I'm gonna come in here and pull these, the lips up to give it more movement at the top. Uh, and then I'm going to apply that lace texture again. And so you guys know what I'm talking about. I'll go grab that as well. So what I've been doing is I have been adding red iron oxide. Thanks for all the hearts. That's really great. I appreciate that. I have been adding red iron oxide in a slip over this fabric. So you can kind of see the echo of that texture in this fabric. And that red iron oxide slip is the same clay body as what I use to throw. So it's exactly the same clay body. This is just a slab tray uh, drop form. And then after that, and I've got a little plate hanger, I've got a little display I'm trying to put together. After that, I apply my white glaze, which is, an, which is uh, alabaster satin, coyote alabaster satin, and then Stephen Hill's Strontium Crystal Magic Cool recipe over the top and I brush that onto the onto the plate surface I dip it uh, onto a more cylindrical surface and that is the result I get which gives that kind of this incredible you know organic feel it's very smooth and easy to you know I sand it yep I sure can try to give it an angle how's that is that better Michael does it give you a sense of the angle and the texture and it gives it just this incredible, I don't know, there's just something about this that makes me ten kinds of excited. I just really am loving the direction this is headed to. You're welcome. Thank you. Um, my next step is to develop a decal that will then be fired over the top of the, over the top of the white glaze in a third firing. And... I want it to be delicate and kind of beautiful and lovely and I want to bring that sort of delicate beauty with something that's more organic and pull that together. I've been using decals, iron, uh, iron laser decals with my photography uh, and I've done it with my illustrations as well but I'm really working towards pulling this feel together and I think this is this is really headed in a direction I'm pretty excited about. So. Um, Boy, that went in a completely different direction than I was expecting, but there you go. <laughs> uh, the thing that I'm struggling with today uh, mentally is trying to decide how I'm going to apply that texture to these pots with handles. I'm not sure I want that texture on the handle itself, and so I'm not sure how I want to process that. So that's going to be something I'm going to be playing with at some point today. Um, after I get this all kind of um, more trimmed and organized. I'm going to move the, the tablet here for just a minute, just down a little lower to give you guys a little better perspective of the, uh, of the wheel head. So I apologize. Don't get sick, anybody. We're just going to move this down just a little. And, uh, yeah, so... and. The, Basically, I throw these so I have to have very little trimming that I have to do. 
So um, I have this attached to my wheel head. I did not cut this off after I threw this. I knew that I was going to need to come back later. Yeah, I think so. I think that's where I'm headed. Now, Mima, tell me what your first name is. I've seen you before on some other scopes. Um, because I like to call everybody by their first names. <laughs> um, yes, I think to add, I think to give it sort of continuation, Nancy. Thank you very much, Nancy. Um, to give that continuation of the elegant with the organic and sort of that, maybe a little of that tension, I think you're right. I think a more smooth uh, handle, keeping it without. It's also kind of a tactile thing, though, too, right? So in some sense, I think it adds a little more tactile flavor to put the texture on there. Hi, Mo. Thanks for joining me. Um, so I don't know. And pictures are, are a form that I really, really love. I collect pictures. I have a great collection uh, that at some point I'm going to do a scope. Uh, I'm very fortunate to live near the Archie Bray Foundation and I get to be pretty lucky and I go to the auction pretty regularly. And Oh, do you <laughs> really? And so it's, um, it's really important uh, to share, I think, ideas. Um, anyway, the, pictures, the picture form is, uh, is one that I really love and I want to explore it more. I collect it uh, and I want to be able to explore it for myself. One of the things I'm thinking about in this particular shape, I really like how the neck comes up and then I have this lip. Like I said, I think the attachment for this lip is going to come out here, um, you know, something like this, something slab built. But um, I'm kind of thinking next time I do these pitcher forms, I'm going to try and do a top, like the bulb at the top and skinnier at the bottom, sort of do the reverse part of this body just to explore and see how that looks. And that's one of the things I really love about doing this. So I don't know, that's kind of it. I just was uh, thinking about. All the things that have been going on in the last week, you know, we've had a pretty, pretty interesting last week, kind of a sad week this last week. Um, an artist, a uh, musical artist who really influenced me uh, as a young person, Prince, died, and uh, of course that was a pretty major thing. Yeah, lots of options, huh, Nancy? There's a lot of ways to um, do things. And some of the things I think we need to learn when we're working with clay especially, for me, and I should only speak for myself, right, is that we can do a lot with clay and we have to trust that it can handle it. Like, I'm always afraid I'm going to push my pots too far, uh, but I need to realize that I can, even if I do, I can do it again. Like, it's not, it's not the final word. It's not... You know, if I break a pot or somebody who happens to be in my studio with me accidentally breaks a pot, it's just not the end of the world. And um, <clears throat> you can do it again. And sometimes there's a lot of freedom in, no right, exactly. If you're not pushing, you're not growing. Um, and I think that if you have, I think there's a lot of folks out there, I know at least me, I had this fear that if I didn't do it perfectly the first time, then... I was not, you know, I wasn't doing it right. Um, but I think in our, we've talked a lot about voice lately uh, in the pottery community, right? And I think we won't know what our voice is unless we allow ourselves to push those limits and push the limits of what our clay can do for us. Now, there's that too. Clay bodies of all different kinds have different capabilities. Uh, I'm about to make a switch from M340, which is a Plainsman clay, to a clay that was um, was formulated by Lindsay Carroll here at the Archie Bray Foundation. It's called A clay, um, and it's appealing because it's a white stoneware instead of this buff stoneware. And even though I'm covering up my stoneware now in this new process with the slip, I am still hopeful. Uh, that the white body will translate in some areas and make that pop and make that more um, dramatic. So I don't know. We'll see. We'll see where that goes. So I am pretty centered there. So 
Here we go. So I threw these knowing that they were going to be, uh, I wasn't going to do like a full foot trim on these. So the bottoms are a little bit on the thin side, but I also, oh, um, maybe. <laughs> I hate, I have a Giffen grip, which I use occasionally. It's, you know, slow, slow and careful, Nancy. That's all it, all it really is. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's a, you just, the, you know, it's, it's dry to a certain point. It's pretty well stuck on this bat head. Um, I don't go straight onto my wheel head. I very rarely use my, my wheel head, but I just go real slow. And uh, yeah, that's good. And I also know I'm not going to do a whole lot of trimming um, because I I purposefully threw this so that I wouldn't have to. I want a pretty nice foot, though. the The way that I treat my feet on my pots is really important to me. I think that um, they have. Uh, there, sometimes they can be ignored, and to me, the first thing I do when I pick up a pot is I feel the foot. And if that foot isn't smooth, even if it's got a, even if it's trimmed, even if it's not trimmed, if it's got, um, if it's got a rough texture from a signature or from wiring or just from being ignored, I tend to not like to to handle that pot. Um, so the bottom, the foot of a pot is pretty important. I know lots of folks are doing decoration on that and I think that's pretty cool. Um, I leave that space to be kind of quiet, uh, but I want it to have a tactile impression. And so I sand everything really super smooth. And uh, I'm going to get in here. I've got several different trimming tools I'm using. I want to give myself a little bit of a catch uh, and a stopping point, a place for the glaze, if it were to decide to run, a place for it to go. I don't usually, I've been using my metal rib more and more lately, which is funny. I usually avoid it like the plague, but. Um, because I'm paranoid about cut, getting cut. <laughs> so, yeah, I think that uh, it's really important to mind these details. And I knew, knew that I was going to have a flat foot on this one. It's going to be super, super, yeah, the, exactly. That's, isn't that Tim C? Isn't that what he called it way back in the day when he was just on YouTube? Yeah. The middle rib of death, that's right. So, it's, uh, okay, so now that's pretty, that's pretty well done. Now the secret to getting these off when you have a wet wheel head and, uh, and your leather dry pot and it's stuck on the wheel head like this is to hold it gently and then just barely turn your wheel head and it pops right off. Now, mind you, there's going to be a little cleanup there. You can kind of see it's a little gummy, right? But I have to come in here and mess with the lip anyway. It's not a finished, not a finished product. So the other thing I do is I sign my pot with my little stamp here. This is my chop. This is my signature, and I sign the bottom. And so now it's signed, and there we go. So there it is. And I'm going to come in here. I'm going to let it set up a little bit more. I'm going to let my handles, I have some handles thrown. And I'll show that to you guys here in just a second. Um, and so the next thing, thank you, Nancy. I appreciate that. Getting sick with bronchitis this last week really slowed me down. I have... Uh, the spring art walk, the local spring art walk, May 13th, and um, I wanted to be all kinds of ready for it. And unfortunately, 
I'm, I'm now I'm a week behind, so we'll see what I manage to get done. I'm going to take my iPad off my stand here. Apologize, I just wanted to show you guys around a little bit. I'm going to turn this around. So this is my wedging table. Got my clay out. These are my handles. I always make extra handles for my pots. So these handles are already prepped for uh, for the the uh, pitchers, and I will further shape them. I just wanted to get them set up. This is one of two damp boxes that I've got. So those are my little bits that I'm going to work on today. Here's my second damp box. Uh, it's that garden shed thing. I've had this the guy for probably six or eight years. He's got some rust. You can see different bits here that are all kind of rusting out, but that's all right. You know, it still works. I use some extra plastic on both of these guys to help keep them extra damp. Um, so over here is where I have those pitchers kind of sitting up. It's uh no, actually it's a plastic utility cabinet. I got it Lowe's for less than a hundred bucks. <coughs> Excuse me. And it works really good. You have to be sure to tape off all the holes. Um, or lay plastic down it, but it works really great. Um, there's my kiln. Boy, it looks huge on my iPad here. So, yeah, so there's my kiln. That's sort of my display stuff I've had for a while, new stuff in progress. I've been working on, like I said, um, getting ready for the show. Hopefully coming up here, some stuff got going, little bits and some little itty bitty whiskey cups in there. I do pretty well on the, with those on Etsy. Um, so yeah, so this is my little space. It works pretty good. Thank you very much. That's it for now. I just wanted to say hi. I hadn't really been doing much except laying around being sick for the last little while. So um, just wanted to catch up with you guys, say hello. Wish you all well. Uh, I hope that uh, you guys are producing, making, and enjoying your clay, doing all kinds of the things that you want to do. It's springtime, so here in Montana it's pretty rainy today. Thanks, Nancy. I appreciate it. I'll, uh, I'll have pictures. I'll do some Instagram stuff. Um, I always, let's see. Yeah, thank you. I'm going to, let me do this real quick. I uh, show you guys, like, so this is all my... Instagram, so I do pictures as I go, my progress pictures on Instagram. I also do a little blog post on any of my periscopes that I do. In theory, you'll find more information about me, about the work I'm doing, stuff that's in progress, uh, shows, all of that kind of stuff, things that uh, I like to do progress pictures as I go because I find it really interesting. I have a uh, couple of little boutiques out in the world that like to keep up on what I'm doing so that's a great way for them to do that uh, and so I hope to be able to uh, keep everybody in the in the process right you know like engaged and involved and and I'm so excited about this new process that I've started with the lace and the slip uh, that I can't help but want to share you know so okay so that's it for me today, you guys. I hope that you have a wonderful Sunday or, uh, sat let's see, it might be Monday in Australia by now, huh? Uh, and that's kind of a cool thing, eh? So hope you all have a wonderful day. Take care of yourselves. Bye.